So uh, the green movement uh, can be traced back through history. Um, really, a lot of the founders of the Green Party came from a lot of the activist movements around the 1960s. The civil rights movement, the feminist movement, the environmental movements, the, the anti-war peace movements. Um, and these people came together and said, you know, there needs to be a party that represents all of us because Republicans and Democrats don't. And that's essentially what happened. Um, it was even to the point that, um, you know, movements sent delegates to the first Green Convention. Mm -hmm. You know, how he wasn't at that first Green Convention necessarily representing New York, though he was heavily involved there. How he was there representing the uh, Clamshell Alliance? Right. He was exactly. there representing the anti-nuclear movement as a founder of that organization. So, yeah, I mean, movements literally built this party and sent delegates as movements to that first meeting in Minneapolis. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was um, it was a um, the Green Party came from all of these movements coming together and recognizing after their struggle in the 60s and 70s that they weren't getting the support they needed from Republicans and Democrats. There needed to be a movement to uh, independent politics and building independent working class power. Um, so that that's kind of the backstory. The Green Party um, itself was formed in the early 1980s. It actually started, um, well, actually, I think the very first Green Party was in New Zealand, if I remember correctly. But the, uh, the first successful one, I guess I'll call it, was the German Green Party in 1980, where kind of building on the, the peace movement and um, like the anti-nuclear uh, movement and things like that, um, they ran a bunch of candidates for uh, their the national government, and they won. And uh, they won on a green platform uh, to to change a lot of things, like we're talking about here, um, for for peace, for you know civil rights, for the environment, um, and that inspired many people across the world to convert their own movements into green parties to say we should also get involved in politics, run our own candidates on our own platform and and make changes. So that inspired green parties um, across the world. Um, so many countries started to form their own green party, more or less based on the German model. And that includes that, of course, included the United States, where these different organizations and movements came together and talked about forming um, a green party, a green political movement here in the US. Um, and so uh, that, that originally was hosted by um, the Institute for Social Ecology, which um, is um, social ecology as a whole, uh, green political philosophy, um, largely um, uh, started by Murray Bookchin, which I think we'll mention him a little bit more as we go further in the presentation. Um, but, but his Institute for Social Ecology kind of helped um, organize the first Green Party meetings where these delegates came from organizations and they talked about forming a Green, uh, green Party. So there's a lot of discussion on what the Green Party should look like and how it should behave, what its goals should be, that sort of thing. Um, and so that happened in the early 1980s. In fact, I think that first convention was 1984. Yep. Um, in Minneapolis. Um, and then from there, um, the, the Left Green Network was was built to kind of promote a, a very eco-socialist Green Party. And um, that was started by Murray Bookchin and Howie Hawkins, actually. Um, and they promoted that through the US. Uh, and it eventually led um, to the first Green Party USA being formed in 1991. There's actually a photo down there from the press conference that was streamed on uh, on C-SPAN. Well, I guess streamed wasn't the word back then. <laughs> but streamed. That's my internet culture. That's that's me being a millennial. But <laughs> um, but you can find on the C-SPAN website. Um, I just shared it. Yeah, exactly. You can find it on there, and it's it's actually a really great um, press conference to watch because um, Howie Hawkins is there. He's on the on the right in that photo, and uh, but every speaker there really clearly defines what the Green Party is about, um, what green politics is about, what eco socialism is about, and the complaints about the Republicans and Democrats that they brought up then are sadly still true today. There's still just as much of an imperative, more of an imperative to have a Green Party today than there was then. So that was the very first uh, um, Green Party. Um, and interestingly, it was also formed um, not just as a political organization, but also to focus actually a lot on political education, helping people organize their communities um, for grassroots democracy, like we were talking. Um, and then also, you know, later in the 1990s, there, there was more efforts to, to run more candidates. 
that um, started up another association of state green parties is what it was called that helped um, Ralph Nader run for president. And Ralph Nader was very um, successful and uh, gained a lot of attention for the green party. And um, to, to wrap up a lot of <laughs> history into a very short statement, um, those two green political organizations essentially merged into what is the now known as the Green Party of the United States uh, in about 2000, 2001 after Ralph Nader's campaign. So, uh, so that's where we're at. So there's a lot of history behind all this stuff. And part of the reason that I mentioned that is because, because of these kind of two organizations here, there's always this tension within the Green Party that there's the um, Green Party US that was founded as kind of an activist organization primarily that also ran candidates. But then there's also this electoral component. And so that is fused together into today's Green Party of the United States that is really a bit of both. It's really meant to be an activist organization and an electoral political party, recognizing that these two aspects are important to be done together um in order for us to build power for the working class that just elections alone isn't enough but also um you know our activism should be complemented with elections so um that kind of i think informs our strategy of how to move forward um yeah it's absolutely yeah. essential you know if you're gonna build if you want to have run successfully in local elections you need to build relationships and build power in your in your local community Right. Mm -hmm. And if all you ever do is run for something and knock on a door asking for a vote, it's going to be really hard to actually build, um, the, you know, a foundation upon which you can win. Uh, the, I, I see questions on, on social media all the time asking, you know, who's going to be the first green con you know, Congress person? And my response is always, it's not who, it's where. Mm -hmm. Right. A, a congressional level race for the most part, is too large for a strictly charismatic name recognition victory. It takes organization, it takes door knocking, it takes relationships, it takes, you know, getting endorsements and hustling, right? So when, you know, when people want to know which they should be focusing on, it's both. Um, you know, we, we run for elections when it's, when it's election time, but we don't stop organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, in between elections, we're, you know, applying pressure to our city councils, you know, when we aren't elected, we can still apply pressure to the citizens. Um, we're organizing people into, uh, you know, to work on issues and, and to address problems in our communities. And when we do that, when, when we're there as the Green Party, you know, showing up, explicitly stating what we're for and putting some skin in the game, then people are going to respect us. And when, when it comes time to ask for the vote at the ballot box, they're going to say, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for that person. They showed up for me. Um, you know, they're, they're, a member of the, they're a member of the struggle in our community. Um, and when we're talking about Republicans, Democrats, even the Democrats that feign the other way, they're usually not part of the struggle that's going on in the community. Um, you know, so they're usually outside of it. So it, to build a truly grass order, grassroots organization, we have to be both. Um, we can't just be there in election cycles and we can't just be doing movements, right? Because look at the movements that the, most of the movements in the United States these days end up funneling into a major not-for-profit and then being funneled into the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. right? We need to build a counter movement to all of that that lets us build power and then we will be able to elect people. But it's yeah, it can't be either or. It's got to be both, and it, it, they're you know two sides of the same coin. Yeah, 